I want I want David Arquette to wrestle Joey Ryan. That's my NWA from Hollywood fucking like dream main event. That would be a very good fucking match. Famous once dead dick wrestler Joey Ryan. <laughs> Against inf- <laughs> against <laughs> against infamous WCW champion David Arquette. Dead man versus dead career this weekend <laughs> at Dead Man versus versus Company Killer David Arquette versus <laughs> Joey Ryan. Welcome to Fight Boys, the weekly podcast about professional and not so professional wrestling. I am your host, Scotty Moore. Oh man, he, he lost his title of Shillmaster, Blake. I <laughs> he had a no. <laughs> uh, yeah, he actually was there, lost. Was it. there was there a Shill versus Shill match in like Mexico? You went to like a T- in Tijuana and you like lost and you had to just stop shilling. Can I be fucking perfectly honest? I did it because I saw Dylan was mouthing along and I was like, I gotta change it up that way he feels <laughs> off. Oh. I, like, I like how this is the only way I can get you to stop your cookie cutter entrance. Yeah, Blake uh, and I, Blake and I, will change it up. Nobody who listens to the first like ten seconds of this show can ever tell it apart until one of us starts talking. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm your long-haired boy, Blake Tanner. <laughs> Blake's just been sitting there patiently this whole time, like I just want to say my name. No one's gonna know who I am. Everybody forgets me. Mm-hmm. It's the most forgettable also, fight boy. Also, Dylan's here. Well, it's because you're the only fight boy that will openly play GTA 4. What <laughs> fucking play? It's five, you piece of shit. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't. Oh. I don't play GTA when I'm recording. I wouldn't do that to you guys. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you only you only you only played Fallout that one time <laughs> while I was talking about Best of the Super Juniors. Yeah. And there was a reason for that. You were talking about Best of the Super Juniors. Yeah, he's just like anyways, let me harvest a few crops it's and just, oh, it's day 5 now. Yep, that's just kind of, that's how it is when we talk about topics that I don't know much about. I right. get well, easily apparently, distracted. Listen, listen. A- according according to uh to the Reddit Pickums, you apparently know shit about New Japan. <laughs> Yeah, hold on, we're gonna get into that in segment two, but before we do that, oh man, Blake, this is something you can talk about, and it's how fucking terrible the Pittsburgh crowd was at Extreme Rules. It was weird, the way that you started that transition sounded like we were just transitioning straight into the, like, the shilling. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, (laughs) let's talk about Patreon.com. No, like... I reached a moment, because, like, the rest of the show... Yeah, uh, to quote Seth Rollins on Twitter... No, stop! Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. He artists. took the clock away. That was still my favorite clip, and I said it to you guys, was of Dolph Ziggler, yep. and he's just fucking yelling, like, it got louder after they took it away! And then you could hear Seth quietly, like, yeah, that's why they fucking did it. <laughs> or, like, no, they shouldn't have done that. Oh, yep. I Because, man, I felt bad for them, because Triple H, Trip had a moment backstage where he's like, what? Vince uh, isn't here today? Uh, Seth's the main event. <laughs> and it was a... I enjoyed way, that yeah, match. So, so, so I have to be honest. So, out of the shield, if, if like, like, Vince McMahon is, is pushing Roman... And if Triple H is pushing Seth, is Stephanie pushing Dean, or is he just no, not, or is he no. just like the lone man out, like with a, well, like just with a beer in the parking lot, just like, well, fuck you guys too. No, the fans are pushing Dean. That's why he's not getting pushed. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's why I they had... pushed him straight into the emergency room. You know what? <laughs> I I want I want like. It'll never happen, but I want like the the New Japan esque way of of challenging, which is you wait until they have a successful defense or like a successful win, and then you go out and just blindside them. Yeah, yeah. And then you hold up their belt, and you're like, "Okay, I'm next." That's how this works. <laughs> I just My want turn. that to be. I just want that to be mm-hmm. Dean on Roman. Like he comes out and he's just, he's just like, "Oh, Roman, dirty deeds," and he just walks away. Oh no, dude! I had this mo- I had this really awesome moment, like where I was like, "Oh, cool! They're gonna have like 
Next week, Roman versus Seth for number one contendership, and then maybe Seth could win it, and Seth could go on to get the top. Nope. Mm, Roman won. Nope. Bobby Lashley. Oh no. Oh, by the way, no. by the way, Scotty, how'd you do at uh, the? How'd you do in the extreme extreme rules uh, picks for us? How, how'd that go? How did we do? Oh, oh my boy. I think I think I won. No. I had a Dylan-esque run that I could never replicate. I got every match correct except for Team Hell No. Uh, Dylan nice. Dylan missed three, I think, and then Blake missed what? four. Yeah, I, I, missed... I, would, it, I lost my lead so hard on that one. Hold on. I know I missed the, uh, the, the, the B team. You missed B team, you missed Braun, because both of you said Braun. And I was the only one who was just like, well, why not Kevin Owens? And then Braun was like, oh, you want Owens to win? He will. <laughs> Murder. He, he will. Yeah. Congratulations. Have you ever seen a dead body win a match? <laughs> <laughs> You're about to. <laughs> exactly. Now, technically, he wasn't dead until after he left the ring. Wait, what was the, what was the third one? Uh, you said Rollins was going to win. God, why the fuck would I think that? <laughs> I, I, oh wait, I feel like I should get like brownie points because I did pick. I, I, I like if you go back, I did pick um, get disqualified, interference, and then get like two more pins afterwards oh, because yeah, yeah, your yeah. opponent got beat the shit that, out of them. That bullshit move, yeah. That bullshit move. That's my favorite bullshit Iron Man match move. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was great. Uh, here's the thing. Um, me and Blake had a sad realization as that match was going on where it was slowly starting to mirror the me versus Blake Iron Man match at JWF's Wrestlepalooza down to the fucking finish of the match. Like, the finish was like, Seth hits the curb stomp, scrambles to get the pin, but then can't do it. Meanwhile, in me and Blake's match, I hit the super kick, I scramble to get it, and then I don't make it. So, I don't know, guys. I think we may have a lawsuit on our hands here. I think, or you're, or, or you're saying that WWE has become so, like, creatively bankrupt at this point. Some, some like, drunkard from Alabama can make their matches six months in advance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've got no time. It's gonna be a good match. I really like this one. Hey, you know these boys know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But no, like the the B team match was definitely probably my like moment of the night. I couldn't because it started the whole thing off, and I was I started on such a high. I see, know. See, they did that, and I was just like, "Oh, they're setting, they're setting the tone weird." Okay, well, mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad that I picked both of the blonde people for the women's matches because they clearly <laughs> don't give a fuck about logic at this point. <laughs> Dude, I feel bad. Both As Oscar and Shinsuke. Shinsuke had at least like a good character development segment. That was that was the best way to do a Nakamura match. He's just like, I learned my lesson. What I should have done was hit him in the balls first, then start the match. <laughs> yeah, that was great. And also, I, 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 I thought they were going to go a completely different way with Randy Orton. Because I thought you they were going to do... Anything other they... than him just popping up and then just stomping on Jeff's balls? Well, no, no, no. I like that. Because to me, that was like a anything you can do, I can do better you think punching him in the balls is good. I'm about to ram my foot so far inside that his balls pop out of his mouth in a segment that I think Dylan actually worked on for WWE and sent in. Oh, he, then, he produces for them, uh, low-key. Yeah. Listen, listen, you, you don't even know, Blake. Like, the moment, <laughs> the moment I will know for, for, like, just straight fact that WWE is copying me is when somebody takes the uh, the move that I wanted to use for day JWF but they didn't have in character creation, which is a reverse attitude adjustment into an atomic drop. The moment Goldust pulls that out after his return or something, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's when I'm gonna be like Scotty, start start filing the paperwork. Hey, clearly, I know what, they low clearly key, listen to our show. Like shit that Scotty and I have sent in text messages like fantasy booking before 
Yeah. It's happened. No, no. Here's what's what it's gonna be. It's when the original idea for the upper dicker gets in, which is Shinsuke sets up for the rainmaker, pulls up, and then pops him in the dick like that. That's when we're gonna know. Oh shit! They're listening to us. You never know who's watching, boys. I read Chris Jericho's book. That's one of his things. He's like, you never know who's watching. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Triple H liked one of our tweets. Oh, now it's gone. What? <laughs> <laughs> It fades away. It's like the end of Infinity War. The whole tweet just pixelates and goes away. Hold on, he sent us a DM. It's just him flipping us off. But no, the picture's disintegrating. Mr. Tibbs? <laughs> I don't feel so good, Mr. Tibbs. <laughs> and then Dylan evaporates. Oh, by the way, uh, Scotty, do you, do you want to tell everybody your big news from today? Oh, yeah, the fact that <laughs> like it wasn't even an Instagram post involving wrestling. It was one of my posts about, like, an episode of Fun Fiction or something, and the guy who runs Pro Wrestling Tees liked it? I don't know. I even looked through, like, the (laughs) hashtags. Like, is there a hashtag he could have possibly been looking at? Zootopia. What you don't (laughs) Zootopia, yeah. He's really into that. Uh, You actually read his fan fiction on that show. Yeah. So So he loved it. He was very happy. So I think we should now be on like a quest to get our own pro Scotty, wrestling. Scotty, 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 you took him from you, you took him from here to here. And it was just... <laughs> that, was, that was good. Um, uh, we I, got a lot of watches going on right now. Do we really think we can add another one? Well, no. I think we combined Dust Watch with this watch, which is instead of trying to go through pro wrestling tees, we go through Dustin. Like, na- I like, like how, uh, listen, instead of trying to DM someone who'll actually talk to us, let's use the person that's been solo ignoring us for over a, a year <laughs> and see yeah. if that'll work. That'll Maybe work. we can, oh, dude, let's see if we can chain getting ignored together, get like four or five <laughs> people in on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. no, 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 what I'm thinking is like our next Dust Watch, I designed Dustin a new shirt that he can put on his pro wrestling tea store and from there I will message the guy and just be like hey bud I gave you I did you a favor I got you this hot new shirt so maybe like hotcakes maybe a fight boy store captain tibbs shirt uh, just, captain tibbs. <laughs> just one singular captain tibbs shirt and that's it no 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 you also have to fo- you have to have to throw up the retro f- a uh, shitty Fight Boys logo you came up with that was just a rat in the New Japan artwork <laughs> for no reason, you other mean... than the fact that you, that that was like your original thing of the first episode. I want you to know I almost <laughs> like stopped doing this because I was like I don't know if I can if I can handle a show where somebody in charge of this thinks that's even remotely a good idea. <laughs> well, fun. it really it's... cemented our place as just the utterly worst podcast yeah, ever. Utter utter shits of a podcast it's also still the logo on the jwf championship the jwf championship is still a giant fucking rat it is the rat great great so guys could we stop being marks for ourselves for like two seconds and just talk about like wrestling sure what do you what do you want to talk about i don't know hold on fuck it soon people are people are pretty excited about impact wrestling um Surprisingly, well, the Impact's Jeff, doing pretty Jeff good. Jeff Cobb got signed to Ring of Honor, so they I'm finally have new for, talent. I really uh, hope that he comes to the show this weekend, to the Atlanta show. Like, just yeah. to see Cobb in person again. Like, this is going to be really dope. Um, be amazed at how short he is a second time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the whole time, like, look to my left, like, there's no Dylan to talk shit with me. There's no... This bullshit. <laughs> My, listen, my favorite my favorite line about Jeff Cobb was like, I would talk shit about him, but I don't want my car to end up on the other side of the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, that, that was really good. Um, no, I, I just, there's so much that we could say about Extreme Rules, because, like, it wasn't a bad show. It wasn't a good show. And it was it a show. It wasn't the show, either. It was the, it, a B show. It was, yeah. It was a yeah. C show. I think, I think somebody, I think somebody said it best, where they said that TV matches have surpassed pay per view matches in terms of quality. Yeah, one hundred percent. 
The only thing that the only thing that paper the TV matches are missing are the title changes. Like once once one of those happens, that's like the last thing. It's just like, watch this pay per view. See somebody win the title in a mediocre match that no one will yeah. really remember. Of course. Also, can we just point out Dylan did predict another thing at last week's prediction series where he said. Asuka, I could pick, but I really want Carmella to win. That way, the next person in line is going to be Becky. Becky. <laughs> Meanwhile, tonight on SmackDown, Becky, after winning, like, the fifth match in a row, <laughs> is like, all right, now I'm coming after the title. And I'm like, fuck yes. Well, it's about if time. You... And, uh, uh, fuck it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, now we get to watch her lose at SummerSlam, so I will have <laughs> got, gotten to see her lose in a singles match at all four major pay-per-views. It's gonna be great. Oh guys. my heart. Yeah. No, no. I like to think this time the hope will boil over. Whereas, like last time, we we kind of resigned ourselves to bliss, so we all said bliss at once. This time, it's gonna be all three of us screaming Becky into the heavens, like it's our own personal dream board. <laughs> yeah. I already know if it is if it is her. And Carmella at SummerSlam. I just, I have, it's one of those principal things yeah, yeah. where I'm going to have to pick Becky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that- still, listen, I still hope for the, our, uh, Becky throws Carmella on top of James Ellsworth and does the disarmor on both of them and they both tap out. Yeah. Love no, that. no, no. Here's what it is. Ellsworth's hand is on top of Carmella's, so when he taps, it looks like Carmella is tapping. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Uh, damn. It should all- technically be a disqualification because he's interfering, but the ref's gonna let it go. Yeah, yeah. That damn Oscar match, though, man. Like. Wait, wait. Was I right? Did he like throw brass knucks or something through? I didn't. He I threw didn't watch a it. bunch of shit. This motherfucker <laughs> turned into the guy with an afro from Harlem Globetrotters who just could pull random shit out. He just kept pulling out numerous things, and then quote of the match I think came from Corey who just said James Ellsworth the ultimate locksmith and Ellsworth has like a lock pick set and is like trying to it was actually a pretty dangerous looking spot to be honest yeah because he had to hook himself in to make it look like he was dangling by one of his foot danglies yeah he had on like a shit ton of like you know how, like, in the 80s, they'd have the uh, bandanas wrapped around their ankle? Well, mm-hmm. Ellsworth, who never does that, did that this time, and one of them apparently gets caught in the cage, and so now he's hanging upside down like an Ellsworth pinata, and she just beats the shit out of him. And then Carmella just jumps up from behind Asuka, grabs her, and uh, props to Asuka, because this was a vicious-looking spot, rams her face-first into the cage... And then Asuka bumps down, and then end of the match. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not disappointed. I didn't watch that pay per view. I mean, uh, were, were there good matches? I, I think the the Owen Strowman one, despite the spot, was still really good. Listen, listen. I think the one thing we can all agree on is uh, that we are bearing witness to the rise of the American Battle Toad. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I got so... The spot I wanted to happen, though, and they didn't let it happen, was... Essentially, the finish of the match was Roman went for a spear, and then Bobby hit a spear instead. I wanted Bobby to go for the spear, Roman not, like, stand up, and then them just collide, collide, rip their shoulders apart, and then fall, and then, like, hit a double pin. Oh, yeah, I would really actually have preferred if both of them tried to go for the spear at the same time, and then just smacked into each other's heads so violently that they fuse together into one unstoppable being. The Samoan Battle Toad. The Samoan Battle Toad. Bobby Reigns. Bobby yeah. Reigns, yeah. No, no, no. Since Reigns is in there, he now calls himself Bob. No matter what, he's like, what's up, Bob? I'm Bob now. We we are Bob. Uh... So, so can we talk about how the WWE is trying to get Brock Lesnar go away heat while at the same time paying him millions of dollars? <laughs> exactly. Isn't that who was it? Was that because I think Alvarez said something like that earlier uh, this week? Uh, is that is that where I subconsciously picked that up from? Because I, I <laughs> yeah. had I thought I thought I had that realization independently, but that sounds like something he would say that I would agree with. Yep, I, I was just reading that before we started. I think he was the one that said it. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but oh, they, my it's true. Yeah, my favorite Alvarez uh, realization of the weekend was during the Kevin Owens match where he just goes, so wait a minute. Kevin Owens, for the past month, has been doing everything in his power to run and try to escape Braun Strowman. So Kurt Angle puts him in a match where the purpose, where the exact goal <laughs> is running away from Braun Strowman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> listen, listen, it would have been too extreme if they'd had a Hell in a Cell match, Scotty. Yeah. Come on, buddy, get with the program. Yeah. Someone on Squared Circle actually leaked the uh, the leaked the logo for next year's e- Extreme Rules pay per view, and it just said "Normal Rules" across the, <laughs> across mm-hmm. the X. It's just it's just gonna be rules. Yeah, just rules. Just rules. Uh, listen, just I understand. Right. I understand the need to like take less risk, especially since the WWE runs the most brutal fucking schedule of anything ever. Yeah. yeah. But like, so don't have the pay per view. Just don't call it that. Like, what was what was extreme about? It? There was one no DQ match that Alexa Bliss <laughs> won <laughs> by DDTing someone five times her size onto a chair. Like that would do anything when you weigh a hundred pounds. Right. Um, Sanity won a tables match. Fine, completely acceptable. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there was one steel cage match. That's not extreme. That shows up on Raw. Yeah, it does. It's also just like an. It's like I consider. That's, a, that's just a match. That's that's actually that's just a match. I consider it like a classic, like an old classic they dusted off for this show. <laughs> you know what? You want to make it extreme? You bring back the old like '80s cage with the blue bars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you bring that back, then I'll consider that. I'll, that's extreme rules. The one that was painted with lead paint. Like, yeah, yeah. get that one in there. No give to it at all. Like you bump, you bump, you bump. That's. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You know what, throw it uh, in an Inferno match, just fuck it. Yeah, fuck it, let's just do whatever. Listen, fact, if we're you know, already, listen, if we're already trying to go for a zero-star match, might as well throw in an Inferno match, there's never been a good one. Nope. Yeah, uh, so yeah, we're just saying fuck it, why don't fuck it, all you people at home, fuck it, go to patreon.com slash load of PS and donate some money, guys. <laughs> I mean, you already it throw it away on the WWE Network. What's a few more dollars? Mm-hmm. All you people upset and wanting to boycott after uh, Extreme Rules, give that money to us <laughs> over at <laughs> patreon.com slash load of BS. You get shouted out on a load of BS. You get ex- access to our exclusive Discord. Check it out, guys, over at patreon.com slash load of BS. So, guys, I'm making a grim realization as this week has gone on because, like, they're slowly announcing matches for Atlanta's Ring of Honor show. And Chuck Taylor's not going to be there? And Chuck Taylor... Well, hold on. The best thing... Chuck is on the card for Nashville, but I've seen nothing about him in Atlanta, which makes me think that he went to Delirious and was like, I will work Nashville. Do not fucking put me on atlanta those psychopaths are coming for me i know i know i can feel the tweets i can uh. feel the tweets coming for me they said they're gonna have a contract this time oh god so, they got another shirt i know it <laughs> so i think this week's dust watch just needs to be like you can't run forever chuck taylor <laughs> Even if you skip the RO, uh, hashtag at ROH show in Atlanta, we'll find you. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> now, maybe ROH will block us. Then we can have that going for us. Mm-hmm. Okay, hold on. I want to make sure, because if he's been announced since for the fucking show, I'm going to feel like a real dick. Dicks in real life. Dicks. <laughs> he has released a new Dicks in real life shirt, and it's actually pretty cool. Good, because Chuck Taylor has the worst pro wrestling tea store of any wrestler I like. Until until they get the official Scotty Moore designed one. Yeah. Just, Who the fuck just... is Captain Tibbs? <laughs> Why is Captain Tibbs on a Chuck Taylor shirt? <laughs> no, yeah, the front of it is like Kentucky Gentleman, all this dope Chuck Taylor shit, but like with the opacity turned down to 5%, it's just a picture of Tibbs smiling in the background. Oh. That means you have to draw a picture of Tibbs, which means you have to like... <laughs> yeah. Draw mm. a picture of somebody that looks nothing at all like Blake Tanner. No. <laughs> Doesn't look like an old, crazy sea captain Blake Tanner, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so, at Sexy Chucky T, I see you're not announced <laughs> for the hashtag ROH Atlanta show. You can't run forever. We'll find you. We love you. See, now I, see, see, I'm really hoping that um, the, some of the same people from the last ROH show you went to when you were too drunk who were like, Oh, Fight Boys, we know you. How do you know us? Yeah, you're that person that keeps tweeting at Chuck Taylor. I hope those people are there again, except they're just like, Hey, dude, listen, um, we've notified security that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have another? He has another shirt. <laughs> oh, no. <coughs> Wait, is that, that that's him? That's it. He tried to change his hair, but that's him. Take him down. <laughs> that's definitely him. It's that Sami Zayn looking motherfucker. Go get him. I am also tagging Ring of Honor. <laughs> Hashtag Dustwatch yep. 2018. See, that's why I'm holding off on going to any events for right now. Because when they finally know your face, Scotty, I'll tag in. Oh, that's what. <laughs> And Hashtag then I'll negative. try to get kicked out of Ring of Honor shows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I do love that we went through that whole segment about WWE and weird things WWE have done this week, but not once have we brought up I'm real sorry, brother. <laughs> brought up who? Because I'm hoping if I ignore it, it'll go away. My favorite thing, my the most exciting thing for me is just the fact that he's going to get put back into the Botchamania intro. <laughs> <laughs> redacted like that's it that's the only thing with just like a fucking post-it note over his face but yeah like, the yeah, okay. party strap match <laughs> uh, with me like i don't know how i feel about it like i don't like the fact I, I mean if they use him as much as they did before they found out he was a raging xenophobe i was i won't be as happy but like i don't know I agree with a lot of the people who are like, he did a lot for the wrestling business, and despite all that, he probably needs to be in this company's Hall of Fame. That being said, so does fucking China. So here's the other yes, thing. Yes, uh, definitely go so exact... does China. So, so uh, as somebody brought up on... Uh brought up on on squared circle uh this guy is also the person where his son drunk drove hit somebody and paralyzed him and and hulk hogan said well oh. maybe that person did something to deserve it oh, oh that's right. yeah I I see that. oh yeah yeah see see everybody forgets that that hulk hogan was a terrible person before we found out he was racist but we, like, let that go because it was his kid and it was, like, stressful and whatever. But, like, you need to understand, all of that comes from somewhere where Hulk yeah. Hogan's just a cunt. Matter yeah, of fact, exactly. I think that we could all, like, generally say to each other, before that, before this came out, Hogan's not really a great guy. He's pretty much a huge dick. No, I don't like him. Like, this case is not being made for whether or not he's a good person. But... He did make them a whole hell of a lot of money and brought No, he made mainstream. Vince a lot of, he made himself a lot of money. He put himself first. He put yeah. himself over everyone else in the company. He fucked over Brett, fucked over Savage. Like no. Likes to say likes to say that he and Savage were cool. Like whenever said no, 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 they weren't. No, they <laughs> he still hated him. Guys, I'm just trying to play Devil's Paul Heyman right now, okay? <laughs> Well, you should know, it's a shit job, and you're not Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, like, if you pan the camera two, like, two steps to the left, it's Hulk Hogan in my room next to me, just like, that's right, brother, talk about the NWO and how I made wrestling cool again. It's like, no, Hogan, please, leave well, me alone. How did you get in my house? <laughs> just say what's on the sheet. <laughs> put put okay. the gun down, Hulk. Put, put it down. Put the yappa potty strap away. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. He's got the yappa potty strap, and like every few minutes, I just hear pop. <laughs> He's like, "I'm gonna get you, brother." It's like it's the freaking Gomja bar of Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The official first Gomja bar reference of Fight Boys. It's a Dune reference, but okay. Well one of many, one of many to come after this. Guys, all, all that's been on, 
my television for the last week is BBC, and they have play, they have played the Dune movie about ten times. Okay, so well, I mean, it's. Okay. I like I like that in your world. There's only there's. Oh wait, no, I'm thinking of Tremors. I was like, there's only one Dune movie. I was like, wait, there is only one Dune movie. Yeah. I'm thinking of Tremors that has eighteen movies. Yeah, <laughs> it does. I mean, Blake, you've deserved like a nice week of relaxation, just enjoying your time. After all, you're apparently one hundred and sixth overall in the G1 Pickums on Squared Circle. Dylan mm. was at what a nice one eighty five. 195. 195. I'm tied with I'm tied with everybody up or wait, wait no I think I'm I'm tied with like I think I have the same amount of points as him but like breakers I am at 195 and he's at 106. Yeah yeah. Meanwhile, I think I'm I'm resting at somewhere around 2300 and 50th in this tournament as if god karmically is cursing me for doing good in the predictions this year by making my g1 none of my g1 choices come true i it's okay you're gonna get the you're gonna get the uh the gato gato's bitch ornament to hang on your christmas tree <laughs> oh wait so the la- the loser gets gato's bitch and the winner gets Gato's, yeah, the Gato belt. The yeah, Gato belt. Gato's son. So help me God. So you need to understand. So help me God. If fucking, if Blake wins that off a squared circle, There's somehow God. magically, Blake, who do you have winning the G one? I don't remember, and I'm not gonna look it up right now. I want it to be a surprise. If it's Jay White, I wouldn't be fucking surprised at this point. Uh, no. I don't think they have, like I said, I don't think they have the confidence to, but they did give him, like, two big back-to-back wins. But at this point, uh, myself and everybody who's a fan of New Japan is just like, I can't wait until you face Suzuki, you New Zealand Ooh. little punk bitch. Can I, <laughs> I, think, can I just hope he say, chokes you. Hope he chokes you out. <laughs> I was, can I, can I, I just I, say, I've never heard him speak and i don't know if it's just the fact that he looks like a hot topic trent beretta i just always assumed he was like from maryland or some shit and i watched the promo he did after beating ace Mm -hmm. where he was just like all right now let's talk about this for a few and i'm like what the fuck just happened (laughs) all right (laughs) i think that my secret is because um they had the uh specific thing this year where if you think Okada's going to lose, you can double down for twice as many points. Yeah. And so far, every time I've said he's going to lose, I've doubled down, and that's twice, and I turned up good. See, here's the thing. I don't know, what was the punishment? Did you lose two points? You if lost you... extra, you lost twice as many points. I think you lost all your points for that day or something. Oh, was yeah. it? Okay. I was fixing to say, because with me, I didn't double down a few times, but I thought about it, and I was like, that makes no sense. Because I didn't think there was a punishment at first. See, see, the thing is is that I thought he was going to lose to to Fale, but I didn't have enough confidence to put to put the double down on it, because yep. I, don't, I don't trust it. I did, I've done a lot better since the first day, but man, that first day <laughs> kicked me straight yep. in the ball, so I was like, right, I forgot. There's, there's one rule of Gato booking, which is that you will always be wrong on the first day. You will not guess yeah. who is going to win, like, the first three days. Yep. And then, like, the last stretch, you're probably safe but like the first four days fuck you fuck all your hopes fuck all your expectations <laughs> about how the company works yeah I, no yoshihashi me, is gonna beat people like that alone <laughs> with, with me i was more at a state of just like i was picking all of these matches thinking of clean victories and i forgot dqs were a thing mm-hmm. you so forgot, you forgot old you forgot old school bullet club is back where they're cheating again yeah. which is why I, which is why on the one hand i'm just like oh you guys like beat the shit out of my favorite wrestler but on the other hand yes original bullet club is back yeah yeah with me i was just like oh damn it hangman page did beat Fale, mother fucker mm-hmm. okay sometimes when I was looking through those, I was like, which name do I like more? And I picked it. <laughs> Who seems like a cool dude? And I uh, really, I went, I went pretty heavy on Fale at some points because I'm like, man, he had a good press conference. I was heavy on Fale. <laughs> Fuck, Fuck him. him. 
Fuck them. I was heavy on Fale, I was heavy on Okada, and I was heavy on... Juice? Were you heavy on Juice? Uh, was uh, the Juice loose with you? I wasn't until the latest episode of Being the Elite, where Juice just... <laughs> They're your friends, uh, dropping man. Some, dropping, some, dropping some LBs, man. I bet the pussy's chasing you now. <laughs> His voice got higher. That was great. And at the end, come on, those are your boys. You love those boys. And I now have to see a art like like a War of the Worlds ROH New Japan match between Juice and Dalton Castle. Like that has to happen. My world won't be complete until there's like a like like a promos leading up to this and then an actual match. Yeah, with Juice <laughs> becoming like evil anti Dalton Castle. He is Dalton Castle's venom. <laughs> uh, he's 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 so great. They're I, your boys. I love, you love those boys. They're your boys. Got like so southern all of a sudden. I was like, "Where is this accent coming from? Aren't you from like Ohio?" Yeah, it was so good. I loved that to death, man. Did you read the like Jervis gentleman Jervis, aka Jervis Cottonbelly interview that I can't remember who someone did it with? He's been through some shit, apparently. Oh yeah. Because he's such a nice boy, and he's like, well, yeah, I was, in fact, hospitalized a few times for mental health problems, but that's all right. It just changed me and helped me realize that it's it's okay to go to the hospital for these things. And I'm like, why are you so happy? Why are you such a good person? Like, uh, and then he, like, cinnamon roll too nice on for Joey Ryan for, like, two minutes, but all positive things. He's like, you know, Mr. Joey Ryan likes to talk about how sleazy he is, but I think he's actually a really nice guy. He was one of the first people to talk to me when I went to the hospital, and I was like, damn it, Jervis. <laughs> but uh, the only part I took away that was somewhat negative, and I don't even think this was from the interview. It was just someone talking about it. Do you know why he's called Gentleman Jervis now? Oh, because uh, because Quack's a dick? Yeah, because Quack fucking apparently... Apparently, when Jervis... A bunch of Chikara dudes, like... Um, shit, what was the name of their announcer? I only know him as loud and no obnoxious, but that's not his... That wasn't his Chikara name. No, um... Gavin Loudspeaker. There we go. <laughs> um, apparently, like, a bunch of those dudes all moved out to L.A. around the same time, and Quack... Or, uh, Jervis started to refuse to pay for his flights to do Chikara because it's literally across the fucking nation. And so Quack, if he wants to bring in a good name like Jervis, should probably pay for that. In response to that, Quack and Bush just said, uh, fuck you, I'm copywriting the, Gen the Jervis Cottonbelly name and you cannot use it without my express permission anymore. Dick move! D dick move! <laughs> Chikara almost feels like it's gotten cult-like, not in its following, but just in its, like, weird little sect of pro wrestling it's in. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that is that is odd. Have you noticed Chuck's, like, not there as much anymore either? Yeah, Chuck's not there as much. A lot of dudes are he got he, got he got signed by ROH and, like, slowly he's like, you know, I'm, not, I'm just not going to train here as much. I don't know if he does train there as much, but it feels like he's pulling him back a bit. And I think it's because Quack's gotten to the point where he's like, you know what, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a huge fan of this. Yeah. I'm, gonna be, I'm just going to be, you know, a complete and utter shit stack. Quack and Bush. How dare you go to a su more successful organization? And it sucks because, like, I met Quack, and Quack's, like, a really nice guy on the surface, and I don't want to believe. I think, like, the last couple years, like, the the amount of people leaving has just, like, become so much for him that it's just embittered him. Like, I think it's finally become too much. I, I like, think... he's put... He's put all this work into his vision, and he, like, all these other wrestlers have profited off of it, but nobody's ever, like, put anything back into... It, and I think that makes him really upset. I also think the solid fucking year where Quack just decided, yeah, no Chikara. Like, no Chikara, it's gonna be part of this really awesome storyline for no more Chikara. <laughs> and then that really didn't work in the like it did for that first season. Because the first season back was with the Flood and Jimmy Jacobs. And then it just petered out. And then Quack was like, but now we've recorded a secret season that's going to play alongside our normal season. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Just do wrestling. As a matter of fact, I think that's a big thing that a lot of bookers aren't realizing right now. Just do wrestling. Why aren't you just going out and doing wrestling? 
Blake, that's Scotty, not... Scotty, you're not even doing that. I don't want you to hear... I want to hear you talking about other bookers. I was fixing to say I do feel a bit like an asshole because today's JWF segment is nothing but promos. <laughs> not a single bit of wrestling. <laughs> Welcome to uh, welcome to the, the the barren years of WWE where it was all John Cena promos. Or, of course, the Authority era where it was nothing but Triple H talking for three hours. I think there was supposed to be more stuff on the show, but he just kept going. Oh, yeah, there were people that like were coming out to do their matches, and Triple H was still talking, so they couldn't do the match. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, no way, Jose is just like, all right, oh, oh. okay, I'll be, I'll be back here, I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> Also, did you guys see where Adam Rose posted the picture of, uh, it was like him and the Rosebuds, and then the bottom picture was, uh, uh, No Way Jose and the Conga Line, and over his picture it just said, Gucci, and then over No Way Jose, Walmart. (laughs) I was like, oh, poor No Way Jose. I just want to bring him back for that feud, for that one feud. Of my close personal friend Adam Rose taking on, uh, t- taking on No Way Jose in a battle to the death. With the AOP as the special enforcer, so they can get some TV time as well. Yeah, exactly. Did we ever talk about the story of me and my close personal friend Adam Rose's first meeting? <laughs> yes, we, I'm almost positive that we have. Oh yeah. Either on this or like be a load of BS. I'm sure we have. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, uh, all it was was like I was wearing my New Day horn. I had just gotten done screaming at the New Day to come take a picture with me, and they didn't. And then uh, Adam Rose came out, and he just takes a picture pointing at my horn like, why this man got a dick on his face? Anyways, bye, man. And then he walks away. And from that instance, I was like, this is my best friend in the whole world, Adam Rose. The day we Um, became friends. And then we became the best friends. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Chuck, and, Chuck and Trent have that, yeah. Chuck and Trent have that copyrighted. <laughs> copyright, copyright, copyright. But you know where you can find all of our copyrighted stuff? It's not copyrighted, but WWE, please don't take it. Next week, you just see them with a Dylan, the Dylan shirt. Like, there's no one even fucking named Dylan on your roster. They're like, yeah, but this is here. <laughs> but yeah, you can get it over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. If you want to get shirts supporting the BS boys, supporting the fight boys, supporting any of us, you can get it over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. And not only could you support the fight boys, <laughs> you could support your favorite JWF superstars. We got merch for the Dylan, as we've said multiple fucking times today. Shirts for Blake Tanner, Scotty Moore, Canada Charlie, the Rat Sension. I'm probably going to take, for the next week only, that fucking Ryback shirt, because I'm afraid we're going to get sued for it. But yeah, get it all over at merch.aloadofyourbs. Scotty, this sounds bad. Who's going to report it to him? Um, Who's the fucking porn star he does his show with? Phoenix Marie? Yeah, Phoenix Marie. Like, I just leave, like, she's just like, I, I had a comment on one of my videos from the Fight Boys Gmail account, and I'm just quietly, like, backing away. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, that's the, that's when he's gonna listen, show listen, up listen, listen, on listen, our Scotty, show. Scotty, this is, this is how you start the next, the next segment for us, which is Porn Watch, where we make a porn of Fight Boys profile, <laughs> and we just start commenting on all of her videos, but with wrestling commentary. And that's it! She really got slammed in this one. Like, okay. But guys, I'm sorry. We've talked too much. We got to turn things Oh, boy, over. don't ever shut up. Oh, you talk <laughs> too much. Dylan, careful. We're going to get fucking copyright striked on YouTube if you sing that so perfectly again. <laughs> but yeah, we got to... If Botchamania doesn't get it, we're fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think he does. He just doesn't give a shit. But yeah, guys, Bless him. we're going to have to turn things over right now to everybody's favorite commentators, Silver Spoon and Captain Tibbs, for another episode of JWF Monday Night War. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to JWF Monday Night War. I'm your host, Silver Spoon, joined, as always, by one bad mother and a very bad father. I think I've used that one before, but it is him, Captain Tibbs. I'm playing games on my iPhone. 
I, I know, I see you finally upgraded. You had a Blackberry for a long time, Tibbs. That's impressive. Yeah, this is an iPhone 2. That's right. I mean, after the success of the excessive force pay-per-view, easily the best pay-per-view of last weekend, I'm sure, I'm sure you're excited to get back into some JWF action. What do you think, Tibbs? Uh, I think that this network error game's real fun. <laughs> That's right. But of course, Tibbs, if we're going to talk about excessive force, we've got to talk about that amazing fatal four-way match between Canada Charlie, the Dilly, Mojo Gruff, and the Lumberjack. Where, of course, through it all, he overcame the odds, and the Dylan, the man you kind of put all your faith in, he came out the other side as the JWF Captain's Champion. Tibbs, how do you react to that? Well, I'm a little bit happy and sad. I'm happy because I finally taught a certain former champion a lesson, and I'm sad because now I have to deal with the current champion. That's right, Tibbs, but... I mean, one person who's super excited about it is, of course, the Dylan, who's in our ring right now with a celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the JWF Monday Night Raw, the flagship oh, of oh, this wait, hold company. On, hold on. So, uh, I, he did not mean to say Raw. He, in fact, meant to say War. I have no idea what this other show is. That he's speaking of. Anyways, back to the Dylan. Hey, hey! If you if you cut my mic again, look at me. Look, look at me, Silver. If you cut my mic again, I'm gonna take that midget Silver back, and I'm gonna make it his permanent job to stab you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he can do that. <laughs> Welcome to the flagship of the horrible, horrible, shitty, tiny, dingy fleet that is the JWF and of which I am now the new captain no longer the Dylan I am captain Dylan oh wait hold on I have to do something first hey hey Tibbs hey Tibbs look look at me look at me I am the captain now <laughs> uh, fuck it's an old meme but it's a good one now last night I did exactly what I said I was gonna do as any good captain should be a man of his word see I beat Two men and one prepubescent boy wearing Canadian tights in a match for this championship, for the Captain's Championship, that I've made a couple of additions to, mainly putting my name right here across the front, because I'm the Captain now, and this is my ship, and I am going to provide the leadership that this ship has so desperately needed over the past few months, the past few years since it was started in a drunken argument between Captain Tibbs and I believe it was the old lady on 43rd and Millhouse, right? Right? Yep. Now, first act of business, um, Hammerman's fired. What? You don't, you don't know that? I can do that. No, we're not. I'm not. I'm not allowing you to endanger all of us by just hiring random homeless people. That's not like like I'm. He still has a job here. Like he's not fired as a wrestler. I'm not that big. A, like he's fired as a wrestler, but he has a job. Like I'm not that big a dick. I'm not putting him out on the street. But like he's not. We're not doing this again. He literally hit somebody in the back with a hammer because he said you told him it was okay. You're not allowed to make that decision anymore. Now. As I was saying, going back to the former things, I have to tell all of you that the next order of business is taking prepubescent boy and uh, illegitimate son of the former captain of this ship. And I'm going to have to talk to him, teach him a few lessons, maybe get him out of this company. I don't think it's working out for him. Like I know he wants to hold up his, his father's legacy, but it's just getting sad. Just getting sad. But don't worry, I have all kinds of improvements that I'm going to be unveiling over the next couple of weeks. And I assure you that you're all in good hands with the captain. Okay, hold up here. Wait just a gosh darn second. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like Canada Charlie coming out. It looks like Dylan's, Dylan's little talk that he wants to have with him is about to happen right now. Let's have a listen. All right, first and foremost here, Buckaroo Dylan boy. You did not win that championship title at Excessive Force, okay? I want you to understand that. 
So that does not make you the captain, the captain's champion, or anything. You, you got lucky. You didn't win anything. You didn't even pin the champion. That's what I hate about those matches, you don't you know? That's just the worst thing of it all. So why is this, Dylan? Why did you choose to literally step over me and pin Mojo Gruff instead? I'll tell you why. It's because you knew I would have kicked out. I would have kicked out at two, one, one and a half, a quarter of a count. So instead, you hit Mojo Gruff with your illegal move that you always hit, that's still illegal, let me tell ya. And, <clears throat> I guess my father didn't exactly care about that. He didn't care about your little upper dickers during the match, because you hit more than Char a few. Charlie, Charlie. What, what? There's no disqualification in a fight of four. Yo, don't you talk to me like that. You hit it on Mojo Gruff and you stole my title. It was an illegal move. You still can't use illegal moves in an illegal legal match. I have the bylaws here. And don't you forget that. I still have a title rematch too, by the way. And that's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. So you know what? We're not going to have to deal with any fatal four ways. You're going to be face-to-face -face with me, Canada Charlie. And I'm going to kick out of any little illegal move you want to try to pull out. So you know what? You're welcome. Bring it on. I'll still come out victorious with my belt around my shoulder again, calling myself the captain's champion. Booyah. Uh, okay. You, uh... You you want a rematch? Okay. okay. Uh, first off, by the way, the reason I didn't pin you, um, you smell like old maple syrup, and like dried leaves, and I really didn't want that that following me. Oh, that's it, Mister. Come over. Oh my God, Dylan dropping Charlie with a huge clothesline. I mean, uh, tits. I think Charlie was trying to get a sneak attack, but Dylan immediately dropping him. A former champ going down. Oh my God, landing on the back of his neck. Dylan immediately kicking him in the ribs. Oh, wait a minute. What's Dylan doing? Tibbs going to the outside looking for, looking for, oh my God. Dylan's actually grabbed a sledgehammer. Tibbs, why have we even got that under the ring? Those ring posts are real hard to get in. That's right. All right. Climbing back into the ring. What's he going to do with that weapon? Oh my God. Battering Charlie in the ribs again and again with that sledgehammer. This is vicious. Looks like Dylan's trying to kill your boy, Tibbs. This is utter hypocrisy here. How can he fire the hammer man and then pull out a hammer? That's right. Meanwhile, Charlie trying to crawl to the outside, but Dylan tossing him into the turnbuckle. Oh, and Tibbs looks like he's setting up for it. That's sick. Dick. Kick. Wait a minute. Looks like Dylan actually thinking better of the sick dick kick and turning towards... Oh my god, Tibbs, he's got the sledgehammer. Dylan smiling evilly, staring down at that head of the hammer as he rushes towards Charlie. And oh my god, a vicious shot between the legs with that hammer. My god, I, that could have. I think that's killed him, Tibbs. The security team running out trying to pull Dylan away, but wait a minute. Dylan tossing away the hammer, and what's he doing? He's, he's actually pinning Charlie with one hand. Tibbs, this can't be legal. Looks like Dylan counting the fall for himself. One, two, three. I mean, Tibbs, is that a real match? What's going on? Well, I'm not going to be a grandfather anytime soon. <laughs> also, no, it was totally illegal. He, listen, despite what the Dylan says, there's no way that he can claim the title of captain. And I'm going to have to make sure about that in the nautical bylaws. I'll be right back. All right, Tibbs. <laughs> Well, well uh, the security team seems to be escorting Dylan away and our medical staff helping out Charlie to the back. I want to take, uh, take a look at a different match, which was a uh, street fight between the JWF Tag Team Champions, the Rat Sension and Bananas in Pajamas. Of course, we know Bananas in Pajamas, a team that was initially thought of as a joke. I mean, they certainly showed that they were no joke at excessive force, Tibbs. They brought that spunk from, where are they from again? I'm not actually sure. I mean, I think Johnny is from the mean streets of New York, and I, I, I think Joey has a bit of the northern influence in his New Yorker accent, but I believe they're from New York. 
And of course we saw them. They used chairs. They used weapons. They put, they actually put Ratboy Connor through a flaming table. But unfortunately, Victor, that, that deciding factor came in at the last minute, taking out both members of Bananas and Pajamas, which of course meant the Rat Sension are still the JWF Tag Team Champions. But Bananas and the Pajamas, they're still here. And they are backstage with one of our top interviewers, Don McDonald. So let's have a listen. Hello everybody, Don the Don McDonald here with Bananas in Pajamas. Now, BNP, after an absolutely impressive showing at the Excessive Force pay-per-view, you ended up unfortunately losing that match against the Rat Sension, your title dreams fading away as it were. How did you react to such a loss? Hey, well, you know something, Donnie, we, we may not have won, but uh... Hey, hey, we got a pretty damn close. I think that's something to count for, don't you think? I mean, we got closer than we ever been to championship go for once, and you know what? Now, now that we had that little taste, we want a lot more. Oh, yeah, that's right, Joey. We tasted the belts. We had them over our shoulders, and we want them for real. So if you think excessive force was the last you heard of bananas in pajamas, you're damn wrong. Me and Joey don't care what it takes. If it takes throwing Carter through five more flaming tables, we'll do it. Because we're going to take what's rightfully ours, what we deserve, and that's the JWF tag titles. Eh, I mean, you know, honestly, honestly, we were probably a little arrogant before that what? match. What? and. No, I, I don't I mean think, to... you know, we no. got to give credit where credit's due, you know, bud. We thought we could just walk in and beat those Mama Lukes into the ground and leave. Just bada bing, bada boom. Sometimes it turns out you got to put a little extra more work in. So we probably weren't going at 110% like we normally do. But, you know, part of that was the Rat Sension. They actually impressed us. Well, more specifically, Victor, he impressed us. That's right, Joey. I mean, it didn't matter how much abuse we did to him, how many vicious shots we laid down. Victor, Victor kept coming in at the last minute to save that little rat boy, Connor. So we may have been arrogant. We may have been egotistical. But now we're focused. And we see the real danger, the real threat the rat sentient poses. I mean, we know Connor. Connor likes to come out, run his mouth, but next time we're in that ring, we're going to do everything we can to take care of Victor, and then Connor, he'll just fall into place. Oh, yeah, because believe me, Bubba Boy, that definitely ain't the last time we're going to be tangling with those two. In fact, uh, I got me a nice little crystal ball right here. A nice little crystal magic eight ball, I see. I got it. Hold on, let's shake it up. Let me see inside. And it's got, oh, what's that say? Oh, oh, there it is. Summerfest. The biggest party of the summer. And believe me, you can't have a party without bananas in pajamas. That's right, my boy. And us. That's right, my boy. And let me think. Let me tell you, what biggest celebration could there be for Summerfest than for bananas in pajamas to finally get their due for us to finally climb to the top and achieve greatness for us to finally be the jwf tag team champions thanks for, your, thanks for your time mcdonald well tibbs i mean let me tell you something looks like the rats or the bananas and pajamas have certainly set, made a pick they uh they say they want one more shot at the uh, at the Rat Sension at Summerfest, uh, what do you think about this? Yeah, all right, I'm into it. We are still sorely lacking tag teams right now, to be completely honest. That's right, Tibbs. Well, who knows? Maybe, maybe something something great will come out of this. Maybe it'll spark a resurgence in the tag team divisions for Bananas and Pajamas to win. But see, speaking of a resurgence, I want to talk about. A man who definitely had a big resurgence at the Excessive Force pay-per-view. And that was a man called Blake Tanner. The JWF World Heavyweight Champion. I mean, of course, 
we hadn't really seen him on war often. He hadn't spoke a lot, but he definitely certified that he deserved to be the JWF World Heavyweight Champion that night. What do you think? Yeah, I would say that's that's pretty, 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 pretty true. That's right, Dibs. And pretty course, damn true. As a matter of fact, good, good times all around. That's right, Tibbs. And, of course, another resurgence we saw is of his former finishing move, the Blake Mission, which he's now redubbed the Blake Panther, which he used to put down Ryback and defeat both Ryback and Scotty Moore in that triple threat match for the JWF Heavyweight Championship. But I don't think Scotty Moore is too happy about that, Tibbs. And he's in our ring right now. So let's have a listen. Okay, no, no, no. Cut my music. Look, look don't any of you boo me either because I'm just here to state facts. You see, I'm Jordan, I'm Manning, I'm Beckham, hell, I'm Warhol, Walt Disney, Nike. I am the best damn thing to happen to this sport. I am a legend in the making, and ain't nobody letting me do what I need to do. Ain't nobody giving me the damn respect I deserve. You see, I'm the reason you're all here. I'm the reason that old man in a captain's hat, I'm the reason his check gets paid every week. And I'm the reason people tune into this damn show. And nobody, nobody's ever paid me the respect I deserve. And why? No, no, no. Seriously. I'm asking you why. No, no. I know you ain't got the answers. I know those two old fucks in the chairs don't have any answers. And I know for a fact that every last one of the boys in the back don't have the answers. Nobody has the answers for me. Because nobody else can do what I do. Nobody else wakes up when I do. Nobody trains as hard as I do. Nobody is my equal. I'm basically the god of professional wrestling because I am the top, the pinnacle, and nobody can touch me. Not Ryback, not the Dylan, not Blake Tanner, nobody. Because they ain't willing to put in the work that I am. They ain't willing to be at the level of greatness that I am. But they sure as hell are afraid of it. Hell, even Blake Tanner's afraid of me. I mean, let me ask you guys. You all watched Excessive Force, right? Who did Blake Tanner go after in our little triple threat match? He went after Ryback. You see, I wanted to do what was right. I wanted to pin the champion, but the champion kept running away until he had one clear shot to make Ryback tap out in the middle of the ring. But you haven't made me tap out, Blake Tanner. You haven't made me give up because I am a god. And gods don't quit. They snap their fingers and their destiny comes to them. So I'm snapping tonight and begging you, begging you, Blake, Come down to this ring, because we're going to do this one last night, one last time, and I'm finally going to get what I deserve, and that's the JWF title, and more importantly, the respect of every last person in my universe, because that's what y'all don't no. understand. What y'all no. don't understand no. is the fact Stop. that I got ideas, Scotty. Whoa. I got visions, Whoa. and- Calm oh, down, yeah. damn it! Scotty, listen to me. You better shut your damn mouth right now, son. Because you are writing a hell of a lot of checks that I am positive your ass can't cash right now. You come out here, you say you're talking about how you're the best. How you're demanding a match. Well, you know something? I'm real tired of people demanding stuff from me tonight. I'm tired of you coming out here, promoting yourself as the best, the best of all time, a god. You haven't proved that to the audience, you haven't proved that to me. You say you deserve respect that you have not earned, especially not from these fans. Because I, I got a little bit of bad news for you, son. This isn't your universe, Scotty. It's theirs. And unfortunately for you, Blake Tanner's not in the arena tonight. He's taking some well-deserved time off. But if you want to earn a match against him, you can do it next week. I happen to have brought in a big name for Summerfest. A real big name. Owed me a few thousand bucks back in the day for starting a gym venture or something. I don't remember. 
So he's going to be doing old Tibbsy a favor. He's been looking for a match at Summerfest, and let me tell you, after, after all that I've heard you come out and say, and I think he'd be more than thrilled to fight you for the JWF title, but I'm going to make him earn it next week against you. So, Scotty Moore, you got one last number one contendership shot. And if you lose against my opponent, you can never challenge for that title ever again, so long as Blake Tanner holds it. But if you win, you got yourself a match at Summerfest. Just remember, though, Scotty, to be the man, you gotta beat the man. Woo! Oh my god, Tibbs, is that? It, it is, it's Ric Flair. Tibbs, how the hell, what, what's Ric Flair doing here? I mean, Scotty Moore certainly doesn't seem happy about it, but I'm thrilled. Looks like the 16-time champ is in the JWF, and next week he has a chance to become number one contender. Tibbs, this is amazing. Yep. Oh, I was I had to dig up some old demons, but damn, I got him. That's right. And Flair just strutting for the crowd, and the crowd is going crazy over this, Tibbs. Well, I mean, I know I want to know what happens next, but if you guys want to know, you're going to have to tune in next time to JWF Monday Night Wolf. Well, boys, it's been an episode. What did you learn this week? Uh, I learned that I'm the backup shill master for when Scotty gets kicked out of Ring of Honor. <laughs> That's what happens. What about you, D? I've learned that Chuck Taylor is actively trying to avoid you, and I feel like you should take that as a sign. Yeah. And I learned that when Dylan gets too bored during uh, JWF, he just starts playing with his Batman, Batman action figures. I was I was trying to see if I could make Blake break character, and to his credit, he didn't. I was genuinely fearing. <laughs> I was like, Blake, this is an intense-ass promo. I just cut off some Kanye-ass shit. I'm going to need you to make sure you're serious. Oh, man. Or, I'm sorry, Scotty Moore of the JWF and Captain Tibbs. I don't know what you guys are talking about. But, of course, Dylan can be found on Twitter at SexyChuckyT. Blake, where can they find you? You can find me at Blake A. Tanner on Twitter, and you can find me on YouTube at the Dark Room Vidya. That's Dark Room V I D Y A. And you can find me on Twitter at Scotty Mo. That's S C O T T Y E M O. And make sure to buy all my books on Amazon. Just look up Scotty Moore, and you'll find all of them. The Queasel Corp trilogy, BS versus the Gods. They're all there. And then, of course, on Audible as well, you can get the first two books of Queasel Corp. And sometime soon, the BS versus the Gods audiobook will be out as well, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, make sure to check out all the other BS Network programs online at a load of pure BS. Dot com. There's fun fiction, opposite attractions, a load of BS, which actually has me and Blake. All these great shows over there. And, of course, make sure if you're watching on YouTube, rate, comment, subscribe, do all that great stuff. And wherever you're listening to this podcast as well, ladies and gentlemen. And, as always, you can find us at a load of pure BS dot com. Step up to the merch table at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. Donate to the Patreon, find us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and remember to follow us on Twitter at Fight Boy Show Chuck Taylor, because when you're a fight boy, you're a fight boy for life! <laughs>